Hi all, let's go over the very exciting game Leela against Wasp. So it, it's a very key match to the side promotion uh, places. So Wasp high up there in the top three with Leela and Deus Ex. So key encounter this in round 21. Book moves, the first four half moves or ply given are here. And Leela now out of book plays C4. We have E6 and the exchange variation. Uh, knight c3, bishop b4, bishop g5. So this is a, a kind of hybrid between Nimza Injun and Queen's Gambit declined. Black playing now g5 and going for early pressure on c3. Leela plays a very dynamic move here, uh, which is uh, to play knight d2. So offering already a kind of Gambit, aggressive gambit. Should black accept the gambit? Well, in chess space light book, it seems uh, players use knight takes g3 here. And although it gives that h file, as long as black's not going to castle kingside, then it should be okay. For example, this uh, has been seen before where black prepares to castle queenside, believe it or not. And this h file dynamic shouldn't be such a big concern. The king's nicely in safe territory here. But in this game, we see black, uh, and Wasp is one of the fastest brute force chess, uh, traditional exhaustive search engines in Division 4, decides it's a good idea to take on c3 and win a pawn. So the scene is set. Rook c1, now usually players with in this position uh, in chess space live book actually play bishop b2 here. Uh, but Wasp decides to hold on to the c7 pawn. So perhaps this is a little bit greedy. Uh, bishop b2, uh, for example, this position uh, is very interesting. This is a common continuation with bishop d6 hitting the queen and the bishop. Tactical. And white uh, should be uh, okay here. Uh, but uh, black, you know, it's not a total disaster for black. But here we see bishop a5. Um, and uh, just to have a look at this position, taking here doesn't seem an entirely good idea, by the way, because of a check. I mean, rook takes c6 doesn't seem entirely good to take on d4, as you're wondering. So uh, we have here e3. So an interesting gambit start position. And black. Goes a bit crazy on the king side of h5. Um, basically, if black's ever going to castle kingside, I think intuitively we know as human beings that there's a kind of vacuum of weaknesses that pawns don't go backwards. This is very, very committal for the future king safety if black's castling kingside to play a move like h5. But it's how to prove it. Usually we don't have the skills to prove anything. Um, so, but we'll leave her. Uh, an alternative. Uh, to castle, it seems to already run in trouble though. To queen, queen h5, there's already big trouble here with h4, ready made pawn structure to undermine. Uh, this is just looking bad uh, for black. This is an example continuation. Even with the king in the center, white can indulge in active operations here. So, this check, for example, if it takes them, that check wins the queen. So imagine this position with bishop g5. This position check, rook c5. Here, this is an interesting line and it ends up white's just better. Very tactical line sequence, but white has a big uh, advantage there. Okay, so castling is a bit risky. Knight d7, uh, this continuation uh, is also, believe it or not, I've discovered, I believe this position is very favorable for white after knight e5. So this gambit seems pretty strong here. Because again, the g5 pawn, it's a lever for either h4 or f4 in this case. So for example, in this case, f4, it's an automatic lever for white to kind of get an acceleration boost in the activity of the pieces and to damage black's king safety. What does black do here? Say knight g4, the bishop can drop back. Um, Uh, because there's a there's a tactical loose piece here. If taking in this position, there's queen takes e3 check, and then queen takes d3. So if the bishop drops back, 
uh, then it is the case now that knight takes is threatened. And so black does this, then there's queen d3, threatening the knight and h7 mate. So say so black plays bishop f5 here. So in this position, uh, bishop f5. Sorry, not bishop f5. That loses a piece of knight g4. Say so f5. These are my notes. Knight takes. This position with f5 is really pleasant for white. Uh, for example, here, bishop takes, queen takes. It's a big advantage for white. So it seems that black's really on the precipice of extreme trouble. Uh, whatever is actually used here, it's getting actually to be a, a critically bad, bad position already. Uh, so h5, though, yeah, it's another committal move. h4, g4, and at least there's a reassurance that it's not so easy to open a file, it seems. Bishop d3, and both sides now castle, so the king having to be content without a defensive knight, a bit bare, but how is it exploitable? We see actually f5 being played another committal pawn move knight b3 if the queen moves then the pedantic bishop takes d2 is annoying so knight b3 and now f3 so leader is trying to open up lines and is trying to make use of these pawns as levers to maximize white's peace activity and compromise black's king's safety so queen f6 knight c5 and the queen actually decides <laughs> to drop back here after this move to e7. Uh, as though e3 might be concerned, but white just takes on g4. Uh, hg is played. On f takes g4. Queen b3 is, is nice. For example, this position taking... It's a big advantage for white. Knight e4. Bishop drops back. Knight g5. And... There's a lot of pieces conspiring against the black king here. Uh, for example, this continuation is nasty, where knight h7 is actually a killer. Uh, for example, here rook takes f8, and here then all the escape squares like f falls taken by the rook, the bishop's taking the h8, so black would have to give up the queen checkmate example so it's all pretty uh, nasty around here with uh, f takes g4 so h takes g4 is played and we have queen b3 anyway and black doesn't have too many options it's very greedy to take on e3 black didn't do that uh, which yeah is is just uh, extreme greed but now e4 is used f takes rook takes King takes and now uh, bishop takes e4 not even throwing the check in first just bishop takes e4 uh, throwing in the check in this position is also it's a strong position uh, so actually this kind of gives white a big advantage anyway this kind of position but this might even be stronger uh, so we have knight d7 uh, if um, d takes whoops if d takes check just to give you an idea bishop eight e5 and queen g8 you can see that the queen side pieces are not helping the king yeah they're all pretty much spectator pieces uh, so for example here check bishop g5 and there's a sort of mating net otherwise it's it's like a total disaster if the queen moves then there's like ouch town so um we have actually knight d7 being played ignoring the bishop but now check and bishop just drops back here offering another pawn which black actually takes so double pawn gambit uh sorry another another pawn gambit rather uh so white's well, still a pawn down but look at these bishops the crisscross of these bishops and that rook this looks as though it's very dangerous we see king g8 and now Queen c2, keeping an eye on the bishop, as well as introducing other possibilities. So if the queen ever moves, we can just take the bishop. So the queen, there's very limited defensive possibilities here. We see bishop d7, but now rook e1, and kind of hari carry here, with queen f7 giving up the bishop. Why? <laughs> well, where else is the queen going? Uh, yeah, 
on queen f8 there's queen h7 chatmate <laughs> it's just, yeah it's uh re really a disaster actually um here there's like queen g6 check <laughs> just winning material you know the, the bishop is uh loose hair uh you know whatever hair for example or bishop e5 check anything really so uh queen f7 uh just dropping the piece <clears throat> after rookie eight the game actually ended here both sides i think it's like plus 6.5 for at least nine sorry at least eight ply so four full moves so yeah wasp didn't really think much of its position so this thing has been taken out of the wasp especially in this game uh okay uh Leela finally got the wasp killer out by the way if you want to kill wasps in the summer there's a terminator racket i fully recommend because they are annoying when you go to a cafe and you've got sugar around especially there's all these wasps you can actually get this racket electrocution racket uh anyway that's a different story so rook takes uh say the game continued rook takes e8 check bishop takes uh queen takes is as good uh for winning material and here uh for example queen d6 queen f6 you can see that bishop e5 is a big big idea uh so for example here queen h6 and something like this is going to be like crunching for example here check is neat this is just a, a fictional continuation but it gives you an idea the, the two bishops are eventually gonna compromise the black king with best play and if here then bishop e5 for example that's just an example from the game finish position bishop up it's not going to be a big deal to finish that off so what did we witness here in a nutshell uh in a nutshell black did Irrec irrec <laughs> irreversible or irrevocable <laughs> irreversible damage to the position out of the opening by winning that pawn so fierce gambit instead of playing what humans play bishop b2 bishop a5 is clearly trying to cling on to material uh earlier i mean the safer route would have been you know knight g3 and head for casting queen uh, queen side the black king never got any peace in this game white did the logical thing to open up lines while the queen side pieces pieces were at dock you know where they were they were still they weren't out of the uh the padlocks uh they were still in the box just spectating over there <clears throat> and so uh a, a thoroughly entertaining exploitation of a leading development king safety and to remember also that pawns don't go backwards especially around your king so if you've got a vacuum of weaknesses it can sometimes be punished with very energetic play opening up lines as this game demonstrated quite fully hope you enjoyed it as much as me and after this game i'll put in the cross table in the next video actually so we can have a thorough look at what's going on in the tournament standings okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much